Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I've posted last and that's because, as you can tell, I've had my baby girl and she is just perfect. Her name's Rosalie and I love you. <laughs> She's supposed to be going down for her nap sometime around now, so hopefully she'll nap while I do this video. Um, so she is one month old now and it's just been an adjustment trying to learn, you know, what she likes and just mom life in general. So that's why it's been a little bit, but I want to try to get back into making some more videos for you guys and today's video is going to be my labor and delivery birth story and it was kind of crazy kind of gives me PTSD thinking back about it because a lot went down. Um, it was a really long labor and I actually had a postpartum hemorrhage with it so it was kind of scary. <laughs> so I just want to tell you about that and I have a couple little short clips um, that I'll insert into the video here and there from the actual day but I didn't really get to film. I didn't really want to like film it. So, you'll just see those clips and pictures as we go. So, we went in, my husband and I went into the hospital around 5 p.m. on November 27th uh, for my induction because I was already, um, you know, late. Uh, my due date was November 22nd, so I was almost a week late already. Well, I was a week, whatever. <laughs> Don't. My head. <laughs> it's all jumbled. But so we went in around 5 p.m. and I just got, you know, the normal admitted, you know, paperwork, got into my hospital gown, got my bracelets and all of that. And the doctor came in and checked me and I was not even one centimeter and I was still. Uh, not thin enough or anything like that so they wanted to start me on Cervidil first which is if you don't know it's like it looks like almost like a tampon that they insert into the uterus and it'll just kind of sit there and administer prostaglandins which will soften your cervix in the hopes that it'll get it ready and uh, to soften so then it can di uh, dilate then so they administered the cervidil into my uterus around I'd say like six o'clock so it was like about an hour after we got there and they told me that that'll be left in for about 12 hours and then or was it 12 hours yeah 12 hours I think but um, they would check every now and again to see if it uh, had fallen out or anything because some people don't need it the whole 12 hours so they left then and after that it was just kind of like a waiting game for a while. Kind of just sat around, watched TV, and played some, I brought some card games we played. And I didn't start getting like regular contractions until around 7pm. And they started off like really really mild, like they weren't even bad. And during my labor I was on the... Uh, like a birthing ball, trying to help open up my cervix more. You know, I was walking around, they had me on a wireless monitor for a while because I wanted to be able to walk around and everything. So I have my little note sheet because it has been a while since I gave birth. So yeah, the rest of the night was pretty chill. They checked me and I still had many progress. So we went to bed around 11 p.m. but I don't know if you ever slept in a hospital, but it, it was like impossible for me to sleep with the nurses coming in, you know, every few hours to check your vitals and then you could hear all the monitors going off and the beds were not even comfortable. So didn't really get any sleep that night. And then in the morning, it had been around 12 hours that my cervidal was in. It was like, I think like eight in the morning that they checked me. Um, so it was time for them to take the cervidal out. They took it out and I was still only about one centimeter. So 
it hadn't really done much for me and my cervix still wasn't as soft as they would like it to be. So then they wanted to start me on what's called a Foley bulb and it's another uh, device that they insert in your cervix to help dilate you. And this is like, it's like two balls of, uh, they're like balloons and they fill them with fluid and it basically manually opens your cervix. So this time they for sure, you know, they're like, oh yeah, this will work. <laughs> Cause it is basically just opening it for you. Um, so they inserted that and that was probably like, you know, nine in the morning or so, eight, nine in the morning. And that one was a lot more uncomfortable than the uh, Cervidil. The Cervidil I didn't even really notice, but the Foley bulb I could definitely feel more pressure and it was more uncomfortable. Um, so they told me that they would leave that in for about 12 hours and that they would hope it would fall out on their own, its own, again. Um, if it would fall out, that means you're about four to five centimeters dilated. So really hoping that would happen <laughs> and then the rest of the day my contractions would just just start getting worse and they actually started me on Pitocin as well around the time they put the bulb in because they wanted me to dilate and get the contractions going in the hopes that my body would start just you know picking it up better like my body was already naturally contracting a little bit but not enough so they started me, you know, at the smallest dose of Pitocin and then every 30 minutes a uh, nurse would come in and increase it um, by two. I don't know the, the measurement, but uh, she would increase it by two and just the rest of the day was just more waiting and I was bouncing on the ball more, I was walking around more, just trying to do anything I could to get um, just to dilate more and hope that this holy bulb would fall out. Uh, it was around 7 p.m. and the doctor came in and she asked if it fell out yet and the nurse told her no. And she told me that if the next hour was 8 p.m., that's the 12 hour mark, if it still wasn't out, then they would have to start me on another uh, course of induction like techniques either another Cervidil or something other you know on the lines of that and I really didn't want to be put on another you know because it's already we'd already been there almost two whole days so I did not want to be you know there longer than I had to but luckily around like right before like I think it was like 10 minutes before the doctor was going to come in to check me the bulb fell out <laughs> I went to the bathroom and when I went to pee it just plopped out in the toilet and it scared the crap out of me but it was such a good sign because I didn't want to be put on another Cervidil or you know whatever method I just wanted to start dilating to get this labor finally going because it was so slow and I was starting to get really uncomfortable the contractions were getting worse but not like so bad that I couldn't handle it yet so yeah, like I said, it was 8 p.m. when the bulb fell out. So that meant I was about four to five centimeters and the doctor checked me and she said, yeah, about five centimeters. Um, they wanted to keep the Pitocin going and they kept still increasing it. Uh, they ended up getting it up to, I don't know, it was close to the max, but it wasn't the max. I think it got up to like 28 and I think the max is like 30. So <laughs> it was, pretty high up there and you could definitely feel those contractions going and they were probably every minute minute and a half and they were starting to get really intense um and this like I said it was like it was pretty late at this point it was like 9 10 p.m and I was starting to get really uncomfortable but I wasn't ready for the epidural yet and the doctors were telling me that I needed to just you know get a good night's rest since you know I'd be pushing the next day and you know they could tell I was like anxious and I was getting uncomfortable so they decided to give me morphine 
so that my muscles could just relax and I could hopefully get some sleep. So yeah, around 10 p.m. I was given morphine and that was a weird experience. Like, I went into my IV that I had and it just, it made you feel like really drunk, <laughs> I guess. Like, I was getting like super tired and I was trying to fight it, but I couldn't. And then when I tried to get up to go pee, I just like, it was like that really dizzy, loopy feeling. So that was weird. So I did get a couple hours of sleep, but around 2 a.m. on the 29th, um, I woke up because I was having really intense contractions to the point where like, I couldn't really handle it anymore. And I was just like, I wanted to get more rest. So uh, my doctor and I agreed that we should get, or I should get the epidural so that hopefully I could get a few more hours of sleep before I'd have to go, you know, push. So yeah, around two in the morning is when I got my epidural. My uh, doctor came in and checked me again and I was still, I was like, I think around seven centimeters around then. So uh, the anesthesiologist came in and he, you know, prepped the area, got my epidural put in and it wasn't bad, like getting it done. But when I was getting it done, he actually, like, I don't know what he did, but he, like, went into the wrong spot. Um, he went and actually punctured the uh, spinal fluid column, I guess. And when he did that, it made my legs, like, just, like, start twitching. And, like, it, it felt like lightning bolts going down my uh, right leg. And it, like, flung up, like... I didn't do like voluntarily <laughs> and it when that happened my husband got really um you know nervous and he hadn't really eaten much so he um almost passed out <laughs> which was crazy and they the nurse had to go over and help him get sit down while I got this needle in my back and I'm like kind of scared because he's telling me he you know messed up so it was pretty crazy um, he finally got the epidural in the right space, and then he told me that when, like, I go to leave, I'm gonna have to keep that catheter in longer than most people, because I guess when they puncture that area, you can get a, um, spinal headache, um, and it's, like, a super bad headache that only will, like, go away if they, I guess, fill the spot that they punctured with usually your own blood. So they told me it'd be easier if I just kept catheter in so that if I needed to get that spot filled, that they could just easily get to it and, you know, fill it with my blood, I don't know. Luckily, I didn't have to get that done, but it was still, you know, kind of crazy. So yeah, I got finally got the epidural done and I did feel a lot better. I was completely numb from the waist down, couldn't move my legs, which was like a really weird feeling. I kind of like wiggled my toes a little bit, that was about it. So then I finally got the sleep I needed until, actually I only got a few hours of sleep. It was like, what, cause they were probably done with epidural around like 2.33. And then I think I got up around like 7.38. I woke up and I was in intense pain. Like all of a sudden I tried sleeping through it, but I couldn't. And I kept, I pressed my button my epidural catheter button because I hadn't pressed in a while and I felt nothing when I pressed the button and I kept pressing it and I got like locked out because you can only press it you know a certain amount of times an hour and it stopped administering and I was like freaking out because I was like why am I in so much pain if I have the epidural and basically it stopped working for me <laughs> um at that point I was I think they said around nine centimeters dilated because a nurse came in and checked me since I was so uncomfortable. It was mostly just like a lot of pressure in my butt, <laughs> but it was like so much that it hurt. And it wasn't even like the cramping of like the contraction. It was more just like the pressure that hurt. And over and over again, I said, I feel so much pressure. I think I have to go to the bathroom. And 
she just said, yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So for the next couple hours, it was like probably an hour and a half, I sat there in the most intense pain. It hurt so bad because I went from like feeling my contractions at like a mid, you know, medium to like not feeling anything to all of a sudden they're like at their highest peak and I was still on Pitocin and you know, they was maxed out. And then, you know, my contractions were about every minute, minute and a half. And they were getting so, so strong. And I remember at that point, I was just like, oh my gosh, I need to get, like, I need to push soon. Like, I'm hurting so bad. And the only thing that would make it feel any better was having my husband do counter pressure on my, like, you know, butt and hips. That was the only thing that would help. And it's like, I was like, I feel like there is a hole tearing through my butt right now. <laughs> like that, that was like, just like the sensation I felt. So yeah, I was like that for an hour, hour and a half, like I said. And then they finally came in and checked me again. Cause I was like, done. <laughs> and she's just like, okay, you're ready to push now. And I was like, thank the Lord. <laughs> it was around, I don't know. It was like, uh, probably like 9, 30, 10, about that point when I was ready to push. So the nurse came in and set up and I was pushing with her for a while. And just, I don't know, like the pushing helped a lot with the pain of the contractions. But then afterwards I would get like the most intense pain after I was done pushing. And that was the part that was like awful. Like, and I would kind of like, yell a little bit afterwards and like kind of like hold my breath and then the nurse would yell at me afterwards come on take slow deep breaths and I was like oh I can't do this um so I ended up pushing for an hour and a half and towards you know the end is when the doctor came in and she's like come on you're almost there and I felt that ring of fire pain like you know when your hoo-ha <laughs> is being like stretched like ripped open at the end and that was very intense and I like literally stopped in the middle of a push during that and they're like no keep going and I'm like oh, this hurts <laughs> so I did like one more huge push and she came out and it was just nuts like she came out and you know they put her on me and it was just incredible like I just started bawling and my husband was like tearing up and it was so cute and then I just remember feeling like so completely exhausted like I could barely like I felt so weak and so tired I could barely keep my eyes open I was kind of just sitting there holding her with my eyes closed and it was just crazy and um I ended up yeah having a postpartum hemorrhage so the doctor was trying to, you know, soak up like all the blood, like absorb it. They like put like towels in you and she's like got her like whole hands, like both hands in trying to scrape out pieces of my placenta and like just all the fluid and it would just, it hurt so bad. And then while she's doing that, she also started stitching up and I could still feel all of it. So she finally gave me a shot of, you know, lidocaine to numb the area because that freaking hurt <laughs> being stitched up without any pain uh, relief. <laughs> but yeah, I just remember sitting there like being like in love with my baby, but then at the same time, like yelling in pain because this girl is stitching me up and she's like scooping out like as much as she can out of my uterus. It was like, plus I had a mirror sitting there because they asked me if I wanted a mirror to push and I said, yeah. And so I could like see the whole thing, <laughs> like all the fluids and everything she was scooping out. And like that just made it worse, like just watching all of it. Cause I'm like, that is a lot of fluid. That doesn't look normal. And yeah, like at that point she was like, I could hear her talking to the nurse, like she's hemorrhaging. We gotta, you know, should I call it? Yeah, you should call it. And you know, they did a call on, you know, the overhead or whatever. And that like freaked me out. Cause after they, you know, did the call or whatever, 
there was like 11 people in the room that just like showed up and at this point I was so tired and weak I couldn't even hold her anymore and the nurse kept asking me she's like are you okay holding her I'm like yeah yeah but then I got to the point where I was like so weak I couldn't I didn't want to drop her so I was like you should probably take her because I'm just like so weak so I took her over to the warmer and my husband went over to the warmer with her while all these people are coming in and I couldn't even keep my eyes open at that point and they were all like swarming in over me <laughs> and I just have like my legs open there's like three people down below working like trying to like scrape more out and stop the bleeding and then I got a uh, anesthesiologist over on my other arm uh, starting another IV to give me medicine um, cause you know, if you postpartum hemorrhage, then, you know, you lose a lot of blood obviously, but that can put your body in shock if your blood pressure drops too low, which can kill you. So they're giving me medicine to hurry up and try to stabilize my blood pressure. And it was just nuts. And then I got people, you know, asking me, they're like, can you hear us? Can you, you know, like, where are you? Like asking me my name, my birthday. And I'm just like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> I like thought I was going to die and it was really scary and my husband was over at the warmer like freaking out like he didn't really know what was going on and he was just terrified and I was terrified um, but they did luckily um, get the bleeding under, under control and my blood pressure stabilized and I lost a lot of blood but it didn't get to the point where I needed to get a blood transfusion it was like right before that so that was good and then finally they like left the room they just had oxygen on me and they're just asking me like if I'm feeling better I'm like yeah I'm feeling a little better now I could actually like keep my eyes open and sit up but I was like super pale like uh, I might insert a picture to show like how pale I was and um, they just you know just trying to get me back to like life I guess and then they finally let me um, hold my baby again which was great because I just wanted to hold her and see her and uh, it was just nuts so after that all happened you know they just kept me monitored and you know they had to keep checking my blood pressure I think at the one point I remember it was like uh, what was it it was like like 50 over like 30 or something it was like super low and I was like oh that's nice <laughs> um yeah they kept us in the hospital until we didn't get discharged till December 1st because it wasn't even for her like she was perfectly healthy like there was nothing wrong with her oh, I didn't even tell you her weight <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah she was born at November 27th at 11 17 a.m. and she was eight pounds 10 ounces so yeah a huge why well, not I guess not huge but a big baby <laughs> and yeah I was just so in love with her and yeah like I said they kept us in the hospital till December 1st and we were finally discharged and able to go home which was great but before we were able to get discharged I had to get like all these iron pills you know because I my blood count was so low and I had to get an iron transfusion which that hurt okay <laughs> it went through my IV and it like burned it made my whole arm like numb and tingly and it burned and I don't know if anyone else has gone through that but it was rough <laughs> and you know they had to like I said they kept that epidural catheter in my back so the day I finally got all of my IVs and catheters out was just great because you know they were taking my blood every like couple hours they were I had the epidural catheter I had two IVs and I was just over it I just wanted all the needles out and just go home and yeah luckily I didn't end up getting that spinal headache that they said about so that was good because I didn't want to have to get another thing done and wrong with me so I guess that's all about you know, like that's all to say we just been home and I've been feeling a lot better. Um, at first, when I first came home, I would get really dizzy and weak still, but you know, I feel a lot better now, which is great. And I got my perfectly healthy, huge baby. She's only a month old, but she's, <laughs> she's
she's already, I think, I don't know, last time we had her checkup, she wasn't even a month old yet. She was like two weeks old and she was already almost 10 pounds. So I guess we'll see how big she is at her next appointment. So thank you for watching this video and try to um, stay tuned for more video, mommy videos to come. And yeah, hope you enjoy. <laughs> It is November 27th and we are on our way to get induced. My due date was the 22nd and our baby still isn't here. So we are headed right now to the hospital. Well, not right now. It's like an hour or two before we have to be there, but I'm gonna get something to eat and just chill before we have to go in. And they're gonna start me on Cervidil.